Welcome back. This is lesson six of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session eight. And in this lesson, we will talk about adjusting the learning rate for our model. So in the previous lesson, we trained our first model. We used transfer learning, which is we took a model that is already pre-trained. So we took a model that is already pre-trained and we uh, removed the dense layers. So include top equals false means do not include the dense layers. And then we added a dense layer here ourselves and uh, we trained this model. This model achieved 81% accuracy approximately. And in this lesson, we want to tune, uh, adjust the learning rate and see which one is a good one. A good way of thinking about learning rates is to use this analogy. So imagine that learning rate is how fast you can read. Let's say you have a book. So let's say you have a book and you want to read this book. So a learning rate tells how fast you read it. Let's say you read one book per quarter. Then one year you would read um, four books. Or alternatively, you can read a lot of books very fast. Let's say you read one book per day. Then in one year you can read like a lot of books. But if you read so many of them, maybe you're just skimming through them and uh, looking at the table of contents or just flipping the book through and then looking at the concepts there. And when you try to apply what you learned in these books, you don't remember much. While if you just read four books per year, then for you, it's easier to apply. And then the other case we can think about is, let's say you read just one book per year and you read it very slow. Maybe you take notes and then you copy every word into your notebook and then you make sure you remember everything. So then you will learn this book really, really well by the end of the year. And if we think about learning rate, this is a um, high learning rate. You read a lot of books, but very fast. Then uh, four books per year is medium. It's not like you're rushing through books, but you're also not learning a lot of them. And then uh, low learning rate would be just one book per year and really, really, really slowly copying everything. The last one is very effective, presumably, but it's very slow. Like you're not making much progress. You're reading every day, maybe one page only, and it's just too slow. So this one... Maybe okay -ish speed, maybe not super impressive, but you're not in a hurry. You're taking your time to learn, and this is just too fast. And when you try to apply what you learned, or maybe in this case, what you learned was really superficial. You didn't really learn a lot, and maybe you forget what you learned in the first book when you already read the second. So when you get tested, then you don't really do well. If we think about this as training and validation, so this part would be reading is training, and then applying what you learned would be validation. And then you would do poorly on validation in this case. But in this case, you'll do fine. And in the last case, when you try to apply what you learned, maybe you will also do poorly because in this year, you managed to read only one book and it, maybe the task you get is not in this book, right? And then you also do poorly. And actually, this book is good. If you read it, then you will do well. But just for the sake of example, so in case of learning rate too high, you overfit. You read a lot of things, but you forget. In case of one book per year, you underfit. So you could have learned faster. And then with good enough, with medium learning rate, it's okay. So this is how you can think of learning rate. It also applies to neural networks and to gradient boosting into other machine learning models. And it's important to find the right balance. Like if we set the learning rate too high, we risk overfitting. If we set it to too low, we will be too slow and it will just take forever to learn anything. So we need to find the sweet spot, the right balance between learning fast, but not too fast and not too slow. We do it in the same way as we did with uh, gradient boosting. So we just try different parameters and look at plots and try to see which one actually works best. And for that, let's take the code we created in the previous lesson and put this in a function. So call it make model. Then there will be a parameter learning rate. I'll just use this one that we used previously. So this, and then I'll just return model. Oh, and I forgot to, to 
to take that part as well. So I don't need this anymore because I pass it from here. Clean it a little bit so this line is quite long. And then what I also want to do is just to make it easier to visually distinguish between like sort of boilerplate code and the actual model. I'll just add these things here. You can also take this out in a separate function called create architecture, for example. I'll just keep things simple and I will keep them in one function. Maybe I can also make something like that. So we have this function that's executed. And now have that. So this is the code for training. And what I want to do is I want to iterate over different values of uh, learning rate. So for learning rate, in, uh, let's say try this one, then this one, and the one we already had. And maybe I'll try a bigger one. And I'll also create a dictionary with scores. And I will, in this dictionary, I will put this course. So history dot history, and then print the learning rate. And to make it easier to distinguish between one model and the other, I'll just print two empty lines. And I forgot also to create this one make model. So model learning rate is LR. And then we train for 10 epochs using this train data set, validation data set. I hope I didn't forget anything. Let's run. So it will take some time. It will just run, go away, and come back in 10, 15 minutes. Okay, it finished. So let's see what we have here. So what I want to do now is just plot this. I don't want to go through all these locks. So we want to have a loop for learning rate history in scores items. Just to see what is inside. Yeah, so this is the history object and this is the learning rate. So now let me copy the code for plotting. So label will be this learning rate. And then let's first look at um, train accuracy. So this one is green, right? So actually, for some reasons, the green one gets the best accuracy on training data set. I'm not sure why this one is lower. So I would expect this one would go like that. I don't know why it's not, but this one, this small learning rate is like after 10 iterations in only reached 80% on training. So now let's take a look at validation. Again, this one learns too slowly, this one after 10 iterations, so it goes up quite steadily, but then after 10 iterations, still around 75%. Well, this model is more than 80. For now, let's remove this one and look at just these three. You can also drop this one because it's worse. From all these four, it's worse. So let's just keep these two. To do that, I'll simply delete from scores. I'll delete this one and I will delete the one with three zeros. Yeah. And then just do it one more time. This one here, it didn't get lucky, but in general, it's uh, always, always is better. It's just in one single case, it's not, but in all other cases, it is better, which tells us that this model is actually with this learning rate should be better. So it means that the learning rate that we'll use for training subsequent versions of the model will be 0 0.01, zeros. And this is how we select the learning rate. So we try different values, we train the model, and then we see which one is best on the validation data set. Yeah, maybe just uh, out of curiosity, we can also look at training data. So I just want them to have different labels. So this validation. These two. So not only it's worse on validation, it's also better on training. So there is the gap between these two and these two is bigger. I think that's another argument in favor of actually going with this learning rate. Yeah.
So this is how we select the learning rate and what we will do in the next lesson, in the next video. So let me run this one more time. What we will do in the next lesson is we will talk about checkpointing. And checkpointing means saving models on these iterations. So we see that uh, here, this model is good, but then it drops, right? And then it oscillates like this. And then we want to save this model and this model because they might be good, but sometimes they just go back. And if we only save a model after 10 iterations, it will be not the best model. So we want actually to save this one and not this one. And we can do it with checkpointing. Yeah, see you soon.